Hello, Command & Conquer fans. This is Jim Vasella, and for this post, we wanted to do something a little bit differently. Ever since the start of the project, you've been asking us how we're going to approach the full motion video cinematics. And so today we wanted to reveal a bit more details about that. But there's quite a story to tell about where we've been over the past year, and figured it would be easier to do that in video form and a little more fun to share those details with you. Now this is going to take about 10 to 15 minutes and I'll be honest, there's going to be some highs and there's going to be some lows about how we've approached this. Uh, but in the spirit of our transparency and our honesty with you, we wanted to give you the raw details about what we've been through and where we ended up. So why don't we get started? When we began the project in late 2018, uh, we had the same question as you. What were we going to do with the FMVs? The honest truth is that we didn't have access to any of the source footage. Uh, to our knowledge, it didn't exist. Uh, when we spoke to Petroglyph, they didn't have it. Our EA archive group didn't have it. Uh, they've really just gone missing to time. And so we were stuck with the old VQAs, which are the old super compressed 320 by 200 versions of the cinematics that we've all seen for the past 25 years. Now, a few weeks into the project, I start seeing these posts around some of the community forums and from our community council. It was of an image that had been, I think, tweeted out back in the Victory Games days uh, when they were shutting down. Uh, and it was a picture of a shelf with all these old Westwood videotapes. Uh, some of you might be familiar with it. And I vaguely remember this post as well from back then. And so I reached out to the community manager uh, who had posted that. And he said, you know what, unfortunately, I think we sent all that stuff to the dumpster to get destroyed. And I'll tell you, uh, I, I was heartbroken to hear that, that we would have had access to this sort of, you know, footage of some sort, but we threw it away. That would just be crazy to me. And I, I didn't want to believe it. And so I, reached out to a former colleague of mine who still works at EALA. Uh, she works with the office admin group. And I said, listen, do you have any recollection of this you know, shelf of these tapes of these assets? And do you know if they were truly sent to the dumpster or not? And she said, actually, yes, I do remember. Um, I intercepted those and I sent them over to the facilities team to uh, store for future use. And I'm like, no way. And this was right before the holidays uh, in 2018. So on January 3rd, I flew down to ELA, uh, met up with the facilities team, and I got access to a storage room um, that actually used to be the mastering lab when I worked down there 10 years ago, but was now a storage room full of all kinds of stuff. And here's a little video that I took that day of what I found. Hi, this is Jim Vasella, the producer on the CNC remaster. Uh, the date is January 3rd. 2019, I had been given a tip that there might have been some old Westwood assets still in the dungeons of ELA. And so I flew down here and was given access to this storage room. And I'm about to check out what might be in here that we could use for the remaster. Um, they said it's in the back. So let's go. I'm seeing this for the first time myself, we've been searching, oh my God, this could be it, this could be it, Westwood Tapes, oh my gosh, open this thing, oh my gosh, this could be it, oh my gosh, I feel like Indiana Jones going into the archive. This is amazing. This might allow us to find some higher fidelity footage for the remaster. Okay, I'm super giddy right now. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <gasps> Dad tapes. Okay, I'm gonna call Frank, find out what the heck all this is. All right, this is super exciting. Super exciting. I'm giddy. All right, sign off. So it's true, I found this old Westwood archive cache 
Uh, here are some photos of all the tapes. There were hundreds. Uh, I spent probably four or five hours organizing these tapes, uh, sorting through them, stuff from all types of old Westwood franchises, um, and a lot of stuff dedicated to Command & Conquer. So I packaged them up. Um, I work up here in San Francisco, and so I put them on carts, I took them down to the mail room, and had them very uh, protectively shipped uh, up to me uh, in San Francisco so that I could try and figure out what to do with them because I was flying back that night. So a few days later, I get these tapes uh, all in boxes from our mail room up here. Uh, I start to unpack them. And here's an example of something that, that we found. So this here is uh, an old tape. It has Command & Conquer pink line on it. You open this up. Let's see here. And this is an old tape that says Command & Conquer tape one of two. Copyright 1995, Westwood Studios. And I'm told by Petroglyph that this is in the writing of Paul Mudra, who was the audio director uh, at Westwood at the time and managed a lot of the, the video stuff. Now, I was incredibly excited to find out what the heck was on this tape. There are two of them, one of two and two of two for Tiberian Dawn. Now the problem is that this is a D2 composite digital tape, is this D2M64M. Um, I'm not an audiophile, I'm not a video junkie, I had no idea what this meant. So I start Googling, I start figuring it out, and realize that this is an extremely rare format of tape. And I start calling around, obviously I check with EA first, is there any way we know how to digitize this? And they're like, no, that stuff hasn't been used since the early 90s. Um, and so I do more researching. I start calling around to local AV shops. No one is able to digitize this stuff. It uses equipment that's just way too old. And so I expand my search and I finally find one vendor on the entire West Coast of the United States uh, that has the equipment to digitize one of these tapes. And they were down in LA uh, in Hollywood because they used to do this for old broadcast TV stations. So back to LA we go. I wrap all these up in a bunch of bubble wrap, super protective. Um, they're like gold to me, I think, you know, not knowing what's on them. And I take them out of the mail room and send them down to this vendor in LA, pay a good sum of money to have them digitized. And so I'm waiting for a couple days and you can imagine the anticipation of like, what is on these tapes? Could this be the HD footage of the original shoots of the tapes? Um, and I finally get, you know, a, a, the hard drive back uh, from them that has all the stuff digitized from these tapes. And the first thing that I see on the tapes is this, and you probably can't read this on the video, but effectively what it says is copy C directory burdette1.vqa to the tape. And so all that is on these tapes, after all that, are the same original VQA videos copied onto these tapes for backup. And unfortunately, the quality is pretty much even worse than, than what we had on, uh, on the old stuff. So you can imagine I was heartbroken. Um, and so that took us back to square one um, because there really wasn't much in the archive uh, devoted to the original CNC or the original Red Alert. They're just too old. So where'd that leave us? So we're like, okay, well, from our creative perspective, uh, we felt that you couldn't replace these videos. You cannot replace uh, the performances of Eric Martin, of Eric Gooch, uh, of Eugene Dynarski, of, of Joe Kukin. You can't replace these performances that we've all known and loved for the last 25 years. Uh, for the authentic approach that we were taking with the game, we had to reuse the videos in some form. So we started uh, thinking about ways that we could upscale them in terms of resolution. Um, and I know there've been some fans who've done this over the years with different video games. Um, and actually some of the CNC community members have done this. And so we start pinging around the community. 
Um, and some of our community council members are pretty savvy and said things. And they actually started working uh, with us. They started working with Joe Bostick, uh, who kind of had a passion for this himself. And they started to work on an algorithm uh, for how they could AI upscale uh, the old resolution videos uh, to make them even better. And we kind of had three goals uh, with the upscaling. The first was to you know, simply upscale the resolution to try and get as much quality out of them as we could. Uh, the old videos were at 15 frames per second. And we found that you could get a much smoother and much more modern look with a 30 frame per second video. So we also want to increase the frame rate. And then the audio was also you know, pretty old. And so with Frank Klopacki at our disposal, we wanted to do an audio pass at the videos and try and give them a little more cleanup, a little more punch. So those were our goals. And over the course of several months, kind of bouncing back and forth with the community, uh, we were able to come up with an algorithm that we felt worked pretty well uh, to upscale the videos. And I wanted to show you uh, a little before and after of where we were able to get the videos um, between the original VQAs that we uh, started with and the remastered stuff. Commander? It's the last transmission? Oh, 0900 hours. Since then, nothing. Perhaps Einstein escaped? Too much to hope for, General. He would have contacted us by now. This is classified. I know. I sent for her. General von Essling, she is a civilian. That's why I don't get killed. Commander, this is Tanya Adams, a professional volunteer. She will work with you on this mission. Somewhere inside this research center, the Soviets hold Albert Einstein. We need him back, immediately. Get Tanya inside, so she can get Einstein out. Once you have located him, bring him back to your drop-off point for immediate evacuation. Be careful. The base is heavily fortified, but not invincible. Their weakness is power. Black out the base and nothing will stop you. Good luck. All right, that's your first look at the cinematics for CNC Remastered. Um, this is the approach we're gonna be taking for all the FMVs in the game. Uh, we have spent the past year putting all the videos through this upscaling process, and they're now all ready to go. Uh, and we're actually pretty happy with the results given the source that we had to work with, and we hope that you enjoy them as well. Now, speaking of source, it's worth noting that we are actually using the cinematics from the console version of the game as the base, and that's because they provide an MPEG foundation, uh, which provides a higher resolution to work from than the old VQAs. Uh, a huge thanks to the community for helping us to track some of those down. Uh, we were able to extract some from the archive that we found as well. Um, now, there's one caveat here, and that's that there's about a dozen videos that were never on the PlayStation version of the game. And maybe that was because of time constraints, maybe because of sensitivity issues. Uh, but for those, we had to use the VQA versions. And you'll probably notice those are a little bit lower quality when you play the game. It's just the best that we had to work with with the source. But the upside of using the console stuff uh, is that we're actually able to bring the exclusive console videos where General Carvel's introduced over to PC. So we've actually structured the expansion missions very similar to the console where you get to go through that story and experience those cinematics, which is personally some of my favorite content uh, on the FMVs and the original games. So that's a great uh, little upside for this process. Now, that's what we kind of have to work with in terms of all the core cinematics for the game. Uh, but there is a silver lining to this entire story. And that's that in the archive, not only did we find some of these core videotapes, but we also found some other special tapes. And that is these, which is B-roll footage from the Red Alert and Tiberian Dawn shoots that has never been seen before uh, by anyone, I don't think, outside of Westwood Studios. So this says, for example, Shepard footage. This is a Betacam SP tape uh, dated May of 1995, and it is all of Shepard's takes. It's him against the green screen, his rehearsals, and we have this for pretty much every character in Tiberian Dawn. Uh, we have a bunch of behind-the-scenes B-roll footage from Red Alert, which was found on tapes like this, Red Alert B-roll tape one. And this is Joe Kukin, 
directing the crew and the cast uh, on the sets, the green screen sets. And it's just a, an amazing historical look at the making of all the cinematics. Again, stuff that I don't think anyone had ever really seen. And so we found over four hours of footage for this, and we're gonna include them all in the remaster. And it's all gonna come through a feature that we're ready to announce today, and that's called our bonus gallery. The bonus gallery is a new feature that we've introduced for the remaster. It is essentially a giant unlock mechanism uh, where for every single mission that you complete, you're gonna unlock a special piece of behind the scenes content. It could be a clip from one of the behind the scenes videos. It could be a photo that Joe Bostic provided from his archive of photos from the Westwood days with some developer notes. It could be an old piece of concept art. It could be a special audio music track that Frank discovered and was never released to the game that no one has ever heard before. So we have some amazing pieces of content. One is tied to every single campaign mission, every expansion mission, every secret mission, and it's gonna be uh, just a really great feature for all of you who've loved CNC for the past 25 years and wanna experience something really new with this remaster. So we hope you love that. Uh, it was a lot of work to cut down and get all that footage ready. All right, that's what we had to share for the FMVs. Thank you so much for listening to this entire video. And as always, please provide your comments and your feedback in the post. We'll be watching, listening, and trying to respond to what we can. And this is just kicking off what's going to be a pretty exciting week uh, for CNC Remastered. So be sure to refresh on Monday. Keep an eye out for maybe another announcement. And we're excited to share more. Thanks, everyone.